Good morning and welcome to worship at Lord of Love for Palm Sunday. And because it is Palm Sunday, at this point in time, I would invite you to look for something that you can praise God with, whether it be an actual palm branch or maybe a branch off of a tree or even a garment of some sort. Go ahead and take a moment, press pause, and go find something to worship God with. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna Hosanna in the highest highest heaven. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethagy at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and the garments and the things we have brought before you today and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Get your branches ready as we now sing all glory, laud, and honor.
us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The second reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew Chapter 27, verses 11 through 54. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again sent to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And all of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. 
Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait! Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment... The curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake, and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have a branch, be ready to wave it every time you use or hear the word Hosanna. And if you don't have one, you can raise your hands and give a little jazz hand sign. Today, as we started the service, we started with joyful praise of Hosanna. And indeed, we sang to God with all glory, laud, and honor to the giver and source of all of our life. But you see, the problem is, like those who were carrying these palms and laying their garments and branches down on the road, we each come to praise God 
with our own set of expectations and how God is supposed to act and save us whenever and however we so choose. And even as we wait and wonder how everything will unfold as we enter this COVID-19 virus pandemic, we do so wanting to know when and how it will come to an end and with our own hopes and expectations. So I think today, exploring what Hosanna means when they shouted it in Jesus' time is a good place for us to start. You see, Hosanna in biblical times meant God's people were praying for God to show up, and they wanted God to help them, to save them, to deliver and rescue them. And the events were so ripe with prophecy and hope. I mean, this scene of Jesus' parade was one that had been told of before. Zechariah talked about the new king who would come to Israel, and he would be riding upon a donkey with a colt and come to take his throne. And in history, we also see that when King Solomon was named king and taking the place of King David, he too rode into the streets and there was a processional parade to celebrate with him. And so all of these connections are awaited with anticipation for God's blessing to come to all people and to fall upon them, and that Jesus was indeed coming, and coming to save them and change their lives at that very moment. Well, lately, when I hear about a parade, it's mostly been about schools and their parades of teachers as they, they come through the streets into the neighborhoods of their children to encourage them to bring about good morale. And the signs I have seen of people's kids where they make a sign that says, we miss you with their teacher's name. Or say, we love you. And there's balloons. And they can't wait to wave and see them once again. Or the teachers who talk about what that meant to be able to see some of their kids on the side of the road, even though they have to be at a distance. But then there are others, like my son, who wasn't on the parade route and didn't get to do so. And yet at home, he was praying the same kind of things I think people were praying when Jesus came. He is tired of his false teacher, and he wants things to be the way they were, and he wants his teacher back. He wants to go back to school, and he wants it all to be just like it was. And I got to tell you, I feel the same way. I, too, am in need of help. Hosanna! I am in need of maybe teachers to hand me things that will help me to make sure that my student does not fall behind. But even more so, I need that of a higher power, the one, our true God, who can give us power and strength when we think we are empty. He can renew us. That is what I need right now. Hosanna, Lord, help me. Now, I don't know if that's where you are or not, but I have no doubt that the people in Jesus' day were all looking for something in that parade, something where they were going to see God act in ways they had been waiting and longing for in a long time, and that's why they did so with such joy, joyful hosannas, because they wanted something more. But the problem is, what they were looking for, and even what I am looking for now, is not necessarily the way God has planned to act, or the ways in which God is thinking things should go. And I know this was true of those 
and their expectations that this crowd had for Jesus to come to the throne and bring back their glory as a people. But that's not how the events come about. It's not what was meant to happen. And we see some more of this if we were to go back to chapter 21, where we had the processional parade of Jesus and the people singing Hosanna. We find that right after this has happened, Jesus goes into the temple the very same day and starts overturning things the way they were. He chases out the money changers. He chases out those who are buying and selling things in the temple, and he's very upset. And he does so saying, how dare you turn my father's house, a house of prayer, into a den of robbers. Yet even as he does this shocking action, he still can see those who are lame, who are hurting and in need of being healed, those who are blind, and he makes them to see. He helps them to walk. And many other people see all of this. And they too continue to shout, Hosanna to the son of David. Help us, save us, rescue us, and be our king. And chaos and order were no longer there to be found. And so then there was this leadership And perhaps they had had a false sense of being the ones who were in control and knew exactly what God was up to. But at this point, they had to have realized that they really weren't in control. Something else was going on. And I can't help but think, even in today's world, with all that is going on and being seen and experienced during this time, of disruption and chaos due to the virus, it too has become crystal clear that all those in power and authority are really not in control. Nothing has gone as planned. And while it is true that staying at home and social distancing is indeed something that we can do that does save lives and should be followed, We come today to the Palm Sunday procession and parade shouting Hosanna because we too are broken, need healing, and because we are sinful, angry, and all the ways in which we have been planning and practicing life are now being upturned, we too need and want order. Sometimes some rituals, such as singing our praises to God and thinking about one more powerful who still has the ability to save and change things, is the reason we come to worship. The reason we can say, Hosanna, Lord help us, Lord save us. Unfortunately, Today, we are still dying to our expectations, with more questions coming up than answers. But we still can gather and pray, cry, lament, and wait to see how God is already acting and how God will indeed save us. And we do this so very humanly because after a few days, after people had been so hopeful and shouted, Hosanna, because Jesus had come to be the Messiah, the new one they had hoped for, a few days later, they were too crying out with anger and disappointment, shouting, crucify him, crucify him. But no matter where we sit with our very own feelings, our shouts, or our cries before the Lord, one thing is always constant. And that is we have a God who no matter what we say or what we do, will continue to act and respond out of love, even in ways we cannot see. 
God's actions, despite our varying responses to the current situation, is love. God's love always prevails. Today we proclaim Jesus to be our Messiah, our Savior, and we joyfully shout, Hosanna! And we remember also the suffering and the dying out of obedience for God's will that Jesus suffered. Also that once and for all, God could put an end to our sin and death that so easily separate us and bring us into God's love in a way that it cannot be taken away. And yet God gives us another gift of love, the gift and promise of eternal life. So dear friends in Christ, in the midst of the stress and the chaos that we are currently living through, it is once again time for us to continue to turn towards the cross, to trust in the mystery of God's actions and God's love to continue to hold us and to prevail, and that God's love and actions will reveal how God continues to hold us no matter what. And so we continue to shout, Hosanna to the Lord of love. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we shall pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Bring about favorable weather and help new life to spring forward from the earth. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, researchers, and all those whose work is needed to help bring about a cure and hope in the midst of the pandemic. And strengthen the work, workers whose job help to restore the health and wholeness to our hurting world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy. Drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give us courage to leaders to free the oppressed and comfort to the afflicted. Bring hope and peace to those who are in prison, living in enclosed institutions, facilities, and refugee camps, and to those who have no idea where they will find a place to sleep this night. Help our actions to creative creatively find ways to participate in the unbinding and healing of those whose hearts are burdened and weighed down this day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer this day. Heal the sick and wounded. Bring peace and comfort to the dying. Bring relief and sustenance to those who have recently lost their jobs and ability to provide for the needs of their family on their own and accompany those battling mental illness and emotional stress in this time of uncertainty. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially those who we name before you in our hearts at this time. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, we pray for your strength to accompany us on our journeys toward the cross with you and for comfort in our journeys of uncertainty at this time. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life with all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, and especially the lives of those whom we remember now. Let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this point in time would be our normal point in the service to receive offerings. 
And we still encourage you to continue to give to your churches and support those who need support. You can also support us by going on to Give Plus, Lord of Love, Omaha, and give of your offering. But offering is not the only way in which we give of our time and our talents to God. And so at this point in time, we're going to take a moment to pause and to think about the ways that we can use our gifts and the things that God has given us to help others. Lord, receive these gifts we offer up to you. Amen. Let us now continue with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth, and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. May the Lord bless you and keep you, May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>